Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Tan, aka Drive. Remember guys, week 10 of the APA, the St. Louis Rampardos are taking on the Durham Drodagons and coach Six Foot Hacks or Elmas to show off or whatever he goes by nowadays. For those who don't know, Leo is a tremendous battler. He's won multiple championships. We've thrown down many times. I had his number up until a few seasons ago where he beat me in the playoffs, but up until then, I think I was undefeated against him. So I feel pretty confident going into this match, but I'll tell you what, our matchup is not exactly that great. So we're gonna be trying some different things. We're gonna experiment a little bit. He's had a bit of a rough season, um, just kind of so far. He's fighting for playoffs. We pretty much locked playoffs, so we're feeling pretty good here. But either way, we're trying some different things out with our new team. So hit that like button down below. You should be in for a really good match this week. And subscribe if you guys are new, if you haven't done so yet. Real quick, as you guys might have heard on Twitter, I'm working on setting up the WBE, which is my battle league this summer. It is going to be mind-blowingly amazing. We're working on an analyst team and a YouTube channel and everything like that. And I'm curious as to what series you guys are interested in on that YouTube channel. Some of the ideas we've had are pretty basic. Coach interviews and power rankings ranking the coaches every week and maybe top plays of the week or top sets of the week perhaps like a free agency kind of thing if there's anything you can think of let me know in the comment section below or let me know what you want to see the most of let's talk about the teams here really quickly so i mentioned that he's got a very powerful team and we have kind of a weird matchup and that's because of things like kieran black kieran black just an absolute monster if he runs icmz i have nothing to switch into it's free shock he's got a clefable which is very bulky can be difficult to take down because it's just unaware i can't set up on it Don Fank instead of Rocks, Rabbitspin, Mega Aerodactyl is really one of the biggest threats though with uh, basically a set with Aerial Ace, Stone Edge, uh, Crunch, maybe Home Claws or Earthquake or something like that just absolutely de decimates my team. So I have to be very careful around that because just Mega Aerodactyl is such a threat. So I have to be careful there. Rotom Mo is a Grass and Electric type that can Volt Switch around, can remove hazards. Zorark, very scary as well because he could disguise himself as something like Kieran Black and that could just net him a kill right there because it's just so hard to know what it is. Lucario, big setup sweeper, it can set up Swords Dance for an extreme speed, it has a lot of priority. Magmortar, very, very powerful fire type, wheezing, defensive, poison type Pokemon. Linoon, obviously known for its belly drum, set up belly drum, extreme speed, kill everything. And then Slowbro, which is uh, obviously defensive pivot with regenerator. You can see the six I expect him to bring. I can see him mixing in Dawn Fan. I could see uh, Linoon coming, uh, but I definitely think that this is pretty close to the six. Clefable. I don't want to see Zorark, but Clefable, Kiram, Zorark, Aerodactyl, Lucario feel pretty likely to me. Let's talk about our team and what I'm bringing and why I'm bringing it, and let's jump into it. So, I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to kick things off here with Snoop. There it is, baby. We got a Choice Specs Drampa. I've got Sap Sipper, so I resist, obviously, the Volt Switch from Rotom. I've got, you know... The ability to take those leaf storms and be immune to them, which is kind of nice. But we've got Hyper Voice, Draco Meteor, Thunderbolt, and Tailwind. You might be like, hey, Drive, why are you running Tailwind on a quiet nature, min speed, Drampa? But you'll see the strategy as we kind of go through the team here. This thing is designed to just break through his team. He really doesn't have a switch in to a Hyper Voice. His best switch in a Hyper Voice is that Aerodactyl, which still takes about half. We've got Thunderous Theory in form, which is my primary, one of my ways to win the game, slash just break through his team. Nasty Plot Agility, Thunderbolts, and Steelium Z, Flash Cannon, which one shots. Unaware Clefable if he's physically defensive, which I expect him to be. It one shots Kieran Black, which is very nice. It just absolutely wrecks his team. If I get a nasty plot up, I run through the team. If I get an agility up, that allows me to outspeed the Aerodactyl and one shot that with Thunderbolt. So a little bit of versatility here with our Thunderous, which I really like. Um, I can't touch Rotom. That's the only thing I can't really touch, but Rotom doesn't really do much back to me except for Hidden Power Ice, and I can hit it with a couple Thunderbolts, and it's still going to do a lot of damage. I've got Liberty here, our Bronzong, right in that Trick Room. You saw I had that... Trick Room, kind of offensive Dram Power. We're bringing Trick Room Bronzong here. With Gyro Ball, Stealth Rock, Explosion, and Trick Room. This thing's got the Culber Berry, so it's there as a potential lead. If Zorark is a lead, I can find out if it's Zorark right away. I can hit him with the Gyro Ball, do big damage to him. Set up Trick Room, I can Stealth Rock, I can do a lot of things like that. So that's pretty useful there. Um, I can kind of get some insight on his team by doing those things. And obviously take the damage pretty well with Culber Berry. Heat Proof is there because I really don't feel like I need Levitate. It's only really for Bronzong. Generally, he's going to run Crunch on the Aerodactyl if he has it, and most things aren't going to try to hit me with a ground move, and I have some ground immunities anyway, so I'm not super concerned there. I've got some... Oh, I also want to mention uh, Terra Volt on Kieran Black just means that Earth Power hits Bronzong anyway. I've got uh, Rhino Clizzy, another Trick Room user with Life Orb, Max Special Attack, with uh, Psychic Shadow Ball Focus Blast, so I can Trick Room, and then I can just fire off some big attacks. If I can live a hit, get Trick Room up, then Rhino Clizz can put in a ton of work and actually win the game late game if I can weaken things like Clefable. So, really cool Pokemon, and again, if I can weaken his team down. Reuniclus can put in a ton of work. I've got a uh, Tornadus here. Tornadus theory in form, of course. Rocking the Jolly. Very bulky Tornadus with the Chalenberry. You might be like, hey, Drop, what does Chalenberry do? Chalenberry actually reduces the power of a normal type attack, which is kind of interesting. That allows me to live a plus six item in extreme speed from my 
Ganon after Stealth Rocks. I can also take on the Lucario pretty well and one-shot both of those with Super Power. I've got U-Turn, Knockoff, and Tailwind. And again, you can start to see the strategy here, which I'll explain after I show you my Scarborn here, my Mega Heracross, which has Rock Blast, Close Combat, Pin Missile, and Substitute. Aside from Clefable and kind of wheezing, this thing just wrecks his entire team. If I get a Tailwind up, we are going to absolutely wreck a lot of things, which I absolutely love to see. And you can see kind of the strategy here, right? Between Drampa and Tornadus having Tailwind, Drampa is more of an emergency type of situation. If Trick Room's about to run out, I can just Tailwind and have Trick Room end. Drampa kind of goes down and then something else comes in and takes takes its place. Uh, Tornadus is really to kind of help out the Heracross uh, to outspeed some certain threats there. But two Trick Room users, two Tailwind users, a Pokemon that can set up its own speed. I have a lot of different speed control going on here. And it's either going to work incredibly well or it's going to work very badly. This is most likely to be a very fast match. My team is built to be incredibly offensive. His team is incredibly offensive. This is going to be a hard hitting match. We are just going to be nuking each other's Pokemon and see what happens. So that's going to be my strategy going into this one. It's going to be tough. Like I said, I, I mean, I could have went more defensive. I could have brought Mamoswine with Ice Shard to help me out against things like Aerodactyl. I could have brought defensive Blastoise to try to help me against Aerodactyl and Kiram and stuff like that. But I decided to go really offensive and try some different things out with Trick Room and Tailwind. So at the very least, this should be pretty entertaining. I'm going to get connected with Leo here. and We're going to throw down for our Week 10 matchup. Wish me luck. Hit that like button and let's jump into it. All right, guys, we are connected with Leo. Let's find out exactly which six Pokemon he's going to be bringing to this battle. I'm kind of hoping there's no Zoroark, dude. I'm just going to be honest, man. That thing just puts so much pressure on my bronze. We're going to see Zoroark. Yeah. Uh, nailed most of it. Uh, no Clefable, though, which is actually pretty sick because that means that Heracross has a much easier time. So we're going to throw Linoon on here. Let me just grab the Shiny Sprite for Linoon. So he's probably going to have a Belly Drum Linoon set to try to sweep us. So we're going to keep our Torn around as best as we can. He does bring Dawn Fan instead of Lucario, which is fine by me. Not super concerned there. And uh, I just have to make a decision on who I want to lead with, which is kind of difficult. So, no Clefable, very surprised. Dawn Fan might be his physically defensive wall. And then no Lucario, but Linoon instead. And again, most likely a Belly Drum sweeping variant. So, let's think about this. Um, if he leads Kiram, I want to have my Bronze on the field. If he leads Zorg, I probably want to have Bronze on the field because I can at least gyro ball it and then switch out um because i don't think he pursuits um i'm gonna need the thing is bronzong is so important in this match i don't think i could lead drampa because if he leads if he leads with the kiram then drampa's in a really bad spot i don't want to lead thunders i mean the problem is if he leads don fan i lead and i lead bronzong then i'm in a bad spot as well it's like it's very very difficult i kind of like the heracross lead as long as it doesn't lead Aerodactyl, I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to lead Heracross. I'm going to lead Heracross because if that brings out the Weezing, I'm really not super concerned. Let's lead Heracross. I, I need to keep my Bronzong healthy because Bronzong, it needs to be able to handle many things in this match. So as long as I don't see Aerodactyl lead, we're going to rock with our Heracross. If it's Aerodactyl slash Zoroark, then I got to switch out. Simple as that. If it's Aerodactyl slash... If it looks like Aerodactyl, I got to switch out. I don't know if he's going to make it look like something else. That is Aerodactyl. All right. Is it actually Aerodactyl or is it Zorark? I have no idea. I have no idea. Do I want to make a big boy play here and just attack and hope that it's actually not an Aerodactyl? Ah, dude, this is the one thing I didn't want. This is the one thing I didn't want. He would go for an Aerial Ace if it's, if it's Aerodactyl, he goes for Aerial Ace. He doesn't Stone Edge. I'm going to go Tornadus. He doesn't Stone Edge here. I'm gonna go Tornadus, I think. Do I go Tornadus? I feel like it's Zorark, dude. I feel like it's Zorark. Nah, but I need my berry. Do I make a big boy play and stay in? And just close combat? Or Rock Blast? Rock Blast kills. I kinda wanna make the big boy play and just say that's a Zorark. All right, guys, you know what? We've, we've, we're gonna make the big boy play here. I'm gonna assume that's a Zorark and I'm staying in and I'm Rock Blasting. And we're gonna hope that we knock him out. Or I close combat and hit the wheezing coming in. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay in, I'm gonna close combat. Wish me luck! Oh please don't be Aerodactyl. It's Aerodactyl, isn't it? Uh please don't aerial ace me and just knock me out. Knock off! Yes! <laughs> dude! God tier plays, dude! God tier plays! Alright. Don't have a sash. Get out of here. Let's go. Okay. Zorark is gone, baby. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, dude. I I had to man up on that play right there. I had to man up on that play right there. Whew! Zorark's gone. Good job, Heracross. Good job, buddy. You just made my life a bajillion times easier. Not that we're anywhere close to out of the woods, but you just eliminated the biggest monster for me. All right, here comes Kieran Black. All right, we're 1 million percent going into, um, he's got to assume the switch here. I got to go Bronzong. So, yeah, I got to go Bronzong. Because if he's Z, I have to, I just have to Bronzong. So let's just go Bronzong here. Oh, dude, good stuff, man. Good stuff. That was massive. Absolutely massive. That was absolutely massive, dude. That was a big play. I wish I pin missile now because I wouldn't have my defense drop and then he would have to, he wouldn't be able to stay in here. But the thing is, if he's Z move, like, I have to be very cautious of that. I doubt he earth powers here. That would be like pretty, pretty top tier if he earth powered, but I'm gonna go Zong here because Zong is my best play into, into Kiram all, all day. So let's see what he's gonna do. He's gonna Z. He's either Hail Z or he's Free Shock. Uh, I think that's the Free Shock or whatever it's called. So he's gonna do big damage, but Bronzong should be able to take this. Is he hail or is he? Yeah, it's Sub Zero Slammer. Okay. And this is the big Z move. I mean, this thing is just monstrous, dude. It does so much damage. It's gonna do 40% to me, uh, roughly. That does actually over 40%, which tells me that he's adamant. He has to be adamant or max attack at least. I may be able to take another hit. But he definitely just burned his Z move. So now at least I know he was Z. And he's uh, free shock. Okay, now I have to ask myself the question, can I actually live a hit? So I'm 84 out of 174. Puts me at 48%. I actually think I can live a hit. I actually think I can live a hit from the earth power. So I'm going to trick room here. I'm going to trick room. Kind of reveals my strategy a little bit. But he's gonna earth power. I should live this. Yes, and I can trick room now. Good. Okay, so we see two moves here. Earth power, I get my trick room up, and now I can either get rocks up, or I can go for an explosion here and do big damage to whatever wants to come in. I kind of like the explosion. Gyro Ball does a little bit more, but if he switches, explosion's better. The question is, do I want rocks in this match? For 25% on Kiram and 25% on Aerodactyl, or do I want damage off on something? I think I could just go for the raw. I think rocks are gonna be good long term. It might force a rapid spin later. Let's go for rocks. If he wants to knock me out, that's fine. I can immediately threaten him with um, with hair cross now. Or Reuniclus or Drampa. Drampa can just Draco Meteor, actually. Like, he has no Draco switch ins. He's gonna switch, so I get my rocks up for free, and then I can explode on whatever, which is gonna be Umaga. Is that the Weezing? That's the Dawn fan. Okay, I get my rocks up, and I'm just gonna explode on this thing. That's fine. Okay, I'm just exploding. He may get his own rocks up, but how many turns of Trick Room do I have? I need to keep an eye on this. I have three turns of Trick Room, so I'll have two turns after this. We're just gonna go for Explosion now. And we're gonna be ex exploding on this thing. Hopefully he just Rapid Spins. That's ideal situation is he Rapid Spins here. And we're gonna do about 30, 40%. Let me actually calc that. I think he's defensive. He Rapid Spins, perfect. Perfect, dude. And now Drampa comes in, baby. Drampa comes in and just Dracos or Hyper Voices. Okay, let me see. Explosion. That looks like he's very he's got at least max HP. So if Drampa comes in against Donphan, I mean I might have to take some damage, but I'm pretty sure we can knock him out with a hyper voice. If he's A V, can I still knock him out with a hyper voice? I do not want to allow him to live. I think so. I think we do knock him out no matter what. I definitely that's my best play. Or I go nuke and I start psychicking. That would be my other play, is I go Reuniclus, and I click Psychic, and I try to just do big damage with Psychic. And Psychic will knock out the Dawn fan as well, and let's see here, Assault Vest. Psychic doesn't do as much as Hyper Voice does if he's Assault Vest, so I think Hyper Voice is the play. Because really, like, what is he switching in? He can't switch into the- I mean, yeah, he could bring in the Aerodactyl, but like, I'm really not super concerned. And Nuke can stay at full health to set up later. So let's go into Snoop here and we can just Hyper Voice. Yeah, I like that play. I like that play, because we're not set up fodder. His best switching is going to be the Aerodactyl. I get two Hyper Voices and we can really nuke that Aerodactyl. So let's just go for the Hyper Voice. 
I can really, really nuke that Aerodactyl at that point. All right, maybe Arenoclist is a little bit better, but Hyper Voice should knock out the Dawn fan here. Wow, he's max bulk, dude. He is max bulk. Okay, so I misplay, I misplay. I didn't expect him to be that bulky, but we're gonna Hyper Voice again and I'll get rid of the Dawn fan. So he trades his Dawn fan for rocks basically. And Drampa gets a KO. With Hyper Voice. All right, I'm very surprised. I'm gonna be honest, I'm very surprised because that is a very bulky Dawn fan. Reuniclus would be the better Pokemon to have on the field right now, considering uh, Aerodactyl and the threat that it is. Um, I really like my Drampa still, but I think I just go for the Hyper Voice at this point. I mean, if I'm able to get a an agility up, Thunderous just wins this game but I have to get in on the wheezing. All right, here comes the Kiram. Okay, that's fine. I'm actually gonna probably just go Heracross here because I don't really care if wheezing comes in. Heracross is a decent switch in. So let's go Heracross. He probably goes for an ice move. Do I just let Snoop go down here? Nah, I don't think so. I can just go Heracross. Let's go Heracross. I'm very bulky. I still think Snoop is worth keeping around. I know this thing already burned his Z crystal, so I'm not like super concerned about that. I'm really surprised he wanted to get rid of those rocks. I, if I, if only I could have gotten rid of that Dawn fan. He was definitely a salt vest. I thought he was like eight, max HP, max special defense salt vest, I think, which I'm very surprised. I'm probably a way to deal with uh, Thunderous. All right, hopefully I'm at 145. He's gonna free shock. Oh, he's gonna free shock. Yikes. So he's gonna take the two turns to charge it. That was a very risky play. Can Heracross actually live this or no? He is gonna free shock me 69 to 82, and I'm at 145 out of 185, 78. So it's a damage roll. I don't have another switch into it, so my best play here is just to go for it. So I'm gonna go for the close combat here and hope for the best. Let's do it. I think he's gonna knock me out though. Here comes the free shock. Yeah, I think I think Karim's gonna knock me out. Maybe I live on a sliver. That crit earlier is gonna matter. Oh, let's go. Oh my gosh. Dude, dude, that was big. That was pretty big, dude. That was pretty big. Uh, let's go. Okay, okay. We're staying composed here. Here comes the, the uh, Aerodactyl. I'm just gonna let him knock me out. I have to, it's no big deal. Let this thing knock me out. I think I just close combat, right? Just close combat, let him knock me out. I don't need I don't need him around. Wow. Okay. Reuniclus can come in now and it can set up a trick room and do some damage. I can also just go Drampa and click Draco Meteor and something dies. Because I can live a Stone Edge if he's not plus one and he can't set up on me. So maybe Drampa is the play. He's gonna Mega. I don't think there's any way Arrow can one-shot Drampa. Stone Edge does not really do that much. Let me just do, uh, what is it, Tough Claws' his ability? He's got Aerial Ace. Is it Tough Claws? Is that the one? Um, Adamant Tough Claws. Is that what Aerodactyl's ability? Mega Aerodactyl, it's Tough Claws, right? I know what it does, I just can't remember what his ability is, if it, what it's actually called. It is Tough Claws. Okay, so I'm pretty sure Drampa lives a hit no matter what. So let's see here. Aerodactyl. Adamant, Mega Aerodactyl, Adamant, Stone Edge does 70% max to Drampa. So I think Drampa just comes in here. Arrow kills Hera with Aerial Ace. I think I go Drampa here, because I could go Reuniclus and Trick Room, but I don't think Reuniclus one-shots this thing. Um, with Psychic, without rocks. And that was the big thing. Yeah, we don't, we don't do enough, we needed rocks. So, I think I go Drampa, because Drampa should be able to live any hit. Let me just double check this calc here. Max HP, Stone Edge does 58. Earthquake doesn't do that much. Aerial Ace shouldn't do that much. Does 50%. So I just Draco and one-shot him. Or I just Thunderbolt as well. Thunderbolt works too, but Draco Meteor guarantees the kill on something. So yeah, we're gonna definitely go into Snoop here. I'm a little damaged, but not enough to worry. So Draco just kills something. The only thing I'm a little worried about is if Linoon is able to come in on a minus two Draco Meteor 
I'm still doing 80 to 95 percent. That's really all I need. So, all right, we're gonna click Draco Meteor because I, I want to kill something here. I want to kill something here. So let's Draco Meteor. I guess the other play is I Tailwind, but I think we just Draco Meteor. I'm just gonna Draco Meteor. Because if he, he's gonna sack Weezing, and if he sacks Weezing, it doesn't really matter. Because I just have to get a Trick Room off of the Renaclis, and then we win the game because everything's gonna be slower than the the um, Aerodactyl. I can Superpower Light Noon and then Superpower Tornadoes, and we're good. So we're just gonna Draco, just gotta hit a Draco Meteor, no problem. Good to go. 90%, let's do it. I mean, I obviously get T Bolt here, but I think Draco is definitely the best play. If he decides to Stone Edge, it should be able to live a Stone Edge. No problemo. I'm expecting to be adamant, max attack. And my calc says that we take it, assuming I didn't mess anything up. I don't think I did. Max attack, adamant, stone edge, tough claws. Yeah. I guess stone edge doesn't actually get boosted by tough claws. Some of the other moves do, but stone edge doesn't, so. So he's gotta think about it. He's also got the risk to miss it, too. He's gonna stone edge, he hits it. Should be able to live it, though. We take it. Draco, yes. Good job, Drampa. Drampa kills Arrow. Okay, so now Lainina is the biggest threat. And I'm pretty sure Tornadus. Let me just double check my Tornadus. Tornadus against Lainoon. Going for Belly Drum. Belly Drum, plus six Lanoon, Adamant, Extreme Speed, because of my Chalin Berry, does not knock me out. All I have to do is get damage off on him. I just need a little bit of damage off on him. So I just have to Draco. That's all I have to do. I just have to Draco, it doesn't matter if it doesn't kill him. I just have to get damage off on him. So as long as we hit a Draco Meteor here, we're good. The problem is, if I miss this Draco Meteor, I think I lose the game. Is basically what happens. So, that's, that's the hiccup, right? Here comes Kelly. If I miss this Draco Meteor, I, I lose the game, I think. But we put ourselves in a tremendous position to win this game, so we are going to just go for it. He's got a Belly Drum. Yep, he's gonna Belly Drop, he's gonna pop his Berry, he's gonna get back to full. I'm gonna Draco Meteor. All I have to do is hit this Draco Meteor and we win the game. That, it, it, from what I can tell right now. I prepared to handle this, this, uh, Linoon. Just hit this Draco Meteor. Come on. Yes! Okay, that's really good. He'll knock me out with Extreme Speed. He can't set up any further, he just has to knock me out here. We're gonna knock him down pretty low. Drampa does a lot of work here. He has no way to like stay in against me. I'm just gonna Draco again. I'm sure he just picks me off with extreme speed. Which is fine. And I have super power. Yep, here comes the extreme speed. Lanyun kills Drampa with extreme speed. Okay, that's fine. We're gonna go right into Tornadus. I'm gonna give it a second. My play 1 million percent is in a Tornadus. Don't even have to think about it. I know my play is in a Tornadus. I just want to make sure that he thinks that I'm thinking about the move. So that way uh, he doesn't have any instance of switching out. Not that Linoon's an issue anymore. It can't set up against me anymore. But I have the Chilin Berry. Let me just summary. I have the Chilin Berry. Chilin Berry is the one that reduces normal type attacks. That's the one we want. I'm going to give it another 10 seconds or so. He may think that he has this game in the bag at this point. But the Chalin Berry on uh, Tornadus will hopefully save us. So, okay. I'm gonna give it five more seconds. Just a few more seconds here. And, okay. We're gonna go right into him. Okay, so I originally was Rocky Helmet and I changed this to Chalin Berry before, uh, like this morning, before before the game. So, superpowers my play. He's got an extreme speed. And I should be able to live this no problem. And if he were to switch to Weezing, it's a non-issue because I just set up Trick Room and then it doesn't really matter. But uh, we do live the the extreme speed uh, because of the Chilin Berry. And I'm faster, so he has to um, he has to extreme speed. So we should be good to go. Um, here comes the extreme speed. The Chilin Berry pops. At this moment, Leo realizes, well, that stinks. And we take that no problemo. I'm gonna get my superpower off here, which is phenomenal. And that is going to knock out the Linoon. Yes, that's what I wanted to see, baby. So Torn kills Linoon with uh, superpower. 
yeah, like I said, this was a Rocky helmet set and I originally designed it as a way to like switch into a couple different things, but I felt like having the Chalin Berry was actually better for Lucario and for Lanyun because I couldn't get beaten that way. Um, so now our play here is just honestly just you turn into Renuclis, uh, get some health back, and then Renuclis should be able to take two hits from Weezing no matter what, so we'll just you turn into it. Um, I still have Thunderous with a Z move, so I'm not super concerned there. We'll just hit him with a U turn, doesn't really do anything. Um, we'll just save differential at this point, and we're gonna go right into uh, Renuclis. We should be able to take two of anything from, from Weezing and just one shot it with a Psychic here, if I'm not mistaken. Here comes Flamethrower, okay. He's probably Flamethrower plus um, Sludge Bomb or something. And you can see how little that does. He's, he's not offensive under any circumstances, and I can just Psychic now. So we'll just go for Psychic. So, dude, I will tell you, uh, I'm feeling good about that one. I'm feeling good about that one because I had to make some tough plays, man. He's Destiny Bonding, so good props to him. He's gonna save his differential by one there with the Destiny Bond. I almost trick room too, <laughs> but no, he's gonna save his differential by one there. So had I gone Thunderous, I would've saved my differential, but um, Weezing kills Renaclis with D-Bond. So uh, I actually could've had a better differential there. It's not a big deal though at this point. This officially does clinch our playoff run, which is very nice. But just to recap some of those plays in that match there, the first turn we had to go big boy. I put my big boy pants on and I said, all right, we are gonna click close combat against a Mega Aerodactyl in front of me. And it was a Zoroark and I got it right and I knocked out the Zoroark, that was massive. The next time, my man Heracross had to somehow, on one health, live a hit from that Kieran Black. And I wanna mention that may have been a damage roll, it probably was a damage roll, but he did crit me with that Zoroark knockoff on the first turn. So if that crit never happened, I would have probably guaranteed live that free shock. So I lived it either way, but that was massive. Mega Heracross picking up a couple kills there. Never even needed my Thunderous. Child Berry Tornadus though saves the day. So show some love for that because that is, that's top tier right there, man. That's some top tier stuff. Big props to my man, Leo. Good luck the rest of the way, my friend. We have made it to playoffs. We got two epic matches coming up. We got uh, Gator and, uh, Gym leader Geo, but he got replaced with someone else. I don't actually know the person. No, no, no hate. I just, I, I can't remember the guy's name. So, yeah, man. Pretty cool match, though. I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. It worked out in our favor. Should have been a 3-0. I kind of messed up there at the end. Should have easily went Thunderous and just went for the Z move, but uh, that's okay. It's all good, man. I didn't think of Destiny Bond, so props to him for that. But either way, let me know your thoughts on the question today. Hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you guys are new. My name is Dan. I also go by A-Drive, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.